Topping the news, many in Wilson continue to shovel through the damage after a tornado touches down this weekend. We're there to cover the disaster. Police say a three-year-old boy was killed this weekend after he accidentally shot himself. And a woman on the run from authorities is behind bars today. I'm Marie Torres. These stories and more coming up on your Newsbreak Briefing. From WHIG TV, this is News Break 31. Now, here's Marie Torres. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to WHIG TV News Break. We're briefing you on news going on in our area. Many continue to shovel through the bits of what's left of their homes and businesses after a tornado touches down in Wilson this weekend. We scan the scene of various businesses, including this car dealership. You can see boats and dumpster compacts tossed into structures. The tornado also tore off roofs, overturned vehicles, and shattered windows. Sunday, our own Herb Greenberg spoke to Sergeant John Slaughter with Wilson Police as he tried to explain the twister's path. Sergeant John Slaughter of the Wilson Police Department. Uh, obviously yesterday about 5.40 uh, p.m. we had a uh, tornado come through. It actually came up near the 301 Wiggins Mill area. Came up uh, Highway 42, uh, crossed over into uh, the Glendale Avenue area and towards Parkwood Mall. Uh, obviously you can see from the footage there's uh, extensive damage to uh, the businesses. Uh, some cars have been flipped over. Uh, several trees uh, reported landing on people's apartments and the houses. Uh, fortunately, there's been no injuries or significant injuries reported and no fatalities. As you can see in Wilson's business area, plywood flew into this hotel building and workers carefully still trying to work through the rubble and downed power lines. We also ventured into a residential area where we spoke to a homeowner who escaped the tornado with, with his life. His home and car were another issue. There are two redwoods that I know of and that apparently the, the tree society knows of in the eastern part of the country. And these were both of them. There's one back over this way and what's left of this one. Um, they were planted, I'd say over a hundred years ago by the Lamb family, both in their grandmother Shams Lamb and in Mr. Lamb's yard over here. And tornado nailed that one. I hope, it'll, I hope it'll grow back a little bit, but it'll take yeah, another are, 100 years to get back where it was. So we this still is have one over here, and Barton College is still studying both of these trees. I hope they can salvage this one. We'll find out. And this is, there's only two? Only two in the eastern part of the country. They're California redwoods. These are the only two known of growing in the eastern part of the country. So. There they are. There's one destroyed, one still over here. Yeah, Doug and Chuck Hackney, uh, tornado hit us. Um, we were watching Channel 5 News and they dropped coverage on the one coming to Wilson. Started covering everything else. You had no idea where it was. We kept asking each other, is it coming here or not? Did it lift up? What's going on with it? Channel 5 never would tell you anything else about it. So uh, we kept watching outside and the electricity cut off. I said, well, let's go out and watch. And we looked back this way and pretty soon you could see debris up in the air. And I started hearing that roaring noise. Rrr, rrr, rrr. I said, Chuck, that thing's coming right at us. And a little while later, we saw the dark spinning cloud of debris up there. I said, that's it right there. Let's get inside and hunker down. We ran inside, grabbed the animals. All of us got in the bathtub. And I peeked around the corner and looked. And I watched it come by this big picture window right over here. And it was just a second. Rrr, came down. Everything here was laid in the street. That was it. I mean, thank God the house is still here. We're still here. I think most of it had done its damage back at that end, and we just got the tail end of it. But thank the Lord we're safe and sound. 
According to the Associated Press, the state says in total there were at least 22 deaths, thankfully none in the Tri-County region. The hardest hit perhaps was in Bertie County, where at least 11 people died in the storm. That makes at least 40 deaths in the southeast from Friday to Saturday. In Roanoke Rapids, a tornado ripped through a Sonics drive-in, damaged an elementary school, and demolished a brick unemployment office. The state says so far at least 80 people were injured in North Carolina. We'll be following up with more coverage of the aftermath tomorrow. When we return on news break, it's a look at our crime report and a toddler dies after an accidental shooting. This and more right after these words. It's back. For a limited time, every Buick and GMC is now being offered at GM employee price to the general public. Plus, you can now get 0% financing for up to 72 months, too. Where? Only at Davenport Buick GMC in Rocky Mount. But that's not all. At Davenport, you'll also get something that GM employees don't even get. A lifetime warranty. GM employee price. 0% financing and a lifetime warranty. See if anybody beats that deal. But hurry, this offer is for a limited time. And it's only available at Davenport Buick GMC in Rocky Mount. We're your news team bringing it home to you with meteorologist Fred Holdsworth, anchor Marie Torres, sports reporter Edward Green, and Matt Havitt, our studio guy. WHIG TV News Break, your voice in the community. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Welcome back to your Newsbreak Briefing. I'm Marie Torres. Police say a three-year-old boy was killed this weekend after he accidentally shot himself. Wilson PD says late Saturday morning at a home on Roundtree Street in Wilson, the boy got a hold of a gun leading to this tragedy. Wilson County Sheriff's Deputy Marcus Ruffin is the legal guardian of the boy and the gun may have belonged to him. Police say this incident is still being investigated. Again, the preliminary investigation does indicate this incident is accidental. In our crime report, police are looking for two men believed to be involved in the murder of a local teen last week. According to Rocky Mount Police, they are searching for 20-year-old Antonio Vantron Richardson and 21-year-old James Rainey Jr. in the murder of 18-year-old Shaquem Avent. Avent, who died Wednesday evening, may have been shot before hitting a brick wall while driving a burgundy Cadillac on Sunset Avenue and Lee Street. Police say Richardson already had an outstanding warrant for his arrest for possession of marijuana in an unrelated case. The two suspects may be operating a Burgundy Honda Accord. If you know the whereabouts of Richardson or Rainey, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers at 252-977-1111. Meanwhile, when Avent was shot, he was out on bond from three breaking and entering charges and two counts of damage to property stemming from incidents in December. Earlier this year, Avent was added to the Twin Counties Most Wanted list based on pictures from his Facebook profile, a public online social media. He may have been involved in gang activity, though police have yet to confirm this. 
A woman on the run from authorities is behind bars today. Thursday, Nash County Sheriff's Office arrested one of Rocky Mount's top 10 most wanted suspects, 39-year-old Lisa Harper Smith, at a residence on Exum Road in Nashville. Smith was wanted by Rocky Mount Police on numerous outstanding charges, including felony larceny, attempted to obtain property by false pretense, misdemeanor child abuse, and two counts of driving while license revoked. She was taken into custody and placed into Nash County Jail under a secured, secured bond. The male suspect with her at the time of the arrest, 38-year-old William Lee Register, was also wanted by police for fleeing from pro probation and parole. He too was taken into custody and placed in Nash County Jail. And can you identify these suspects? The two women pictured here are suspects in a fraud and obtaining property by false pretense case reporting back to the end of March. The women are also wanted for forgery. If you can identify these suspects or know their whereabouts, you're urged to contact Crime Stoppers at the number seen on the screen. After the break, it's an update in sports and weather. Don't go anywhere. It's back. For a limited time, every Buick and GMC is now being offered at GM employee price to the general public. Plus, you can now get 0% financing for up to 72 months, too. Where? Only at Davenport Buick GMC in Rocky Mount. But that's not all. At Davenport, you'll also get something that GM employees don't even get. A lifetime warranty. GM employee price. 0% financing and a lifetime warranty. See if anybody beats that deal. But hurry, this offer is for a limited time. And it's only available at Davenport Buick GMC in Rocky Mount. Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Thanks for staying with us. Have you heard? The circus is in town. This week, sponsored by the local Kiwanis Club, Cole Brothers Circus of the Stars is flooding the campus of North Carolina Wesleyan College for their two-day spectacular beginning Wednesday. Last week, students at Benvenue Elementary School were thrilled to get a sneak peek with Mimi the Clown. Nash Rocky Mount School Board member Reginald Silver also spoke to the students about a very special deal. Has told you all that we've got some tickets for you guys um, for the circus next week. It's next Wednesday and Thursday. I'm going to leave some tickets for everybody. Now, if you're not good next week and on your best behavior the rest of today, if you're going home after today for a week, I think, right? Yeah. All right. So you got to be good the rest of the day. Nobody can be sent to time out or sent to the office. All right, if you do well, I'm going to make sure that all of you have tickets to come to the circus on next Wednesday and Thursday. All right? All right. Again, this event will be held Wednesday and Thursday with daily performances starting at 4.30 and 7.30 p.m. It's now time to look at the weather with Fred Holdsworth. Fred?
And hello everyone, a wild weekend. One of the worst tornado outbreaks in the past 30 years came through our area on Saturday and this was uh, forecast pretty well by the Storm Prediction Center. Hats off to them for a great job. And the situation was so bad that the National Weather Service office in Raleigh had to be abandoned due to an approaching tornado and that forecast duty was handed off to Blacksburg, Virginia. The uh, forecast duties were transferred back to Raleigh an hour or so later as the situation calmed down a bit, but just unbelievable damage over uh, Lee County down towards Sanford, uh, Wilson County, Cumberland County, Bertie County, uh, Halifax County with Roanoke Rapids, and uh, we're going to have a couple of days to pick up the pieces and then we'll go into a wet pattern from Wednesday on into the weekend. Now we're taking uh, quite a bit of uh, warm air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico and then that will, uh, that moving up into our area ahead of an approaching cold front and that will give us quite a bit of uh, instability and that will set off those thunderstorms but we don't expect anything like what we saw over the past weekend. Let's take a look at our uh, forecast map now and we'll see that we have a warm front going across just about half the world here going across uh, Wyoming and stretching all the way down into the Gulf and then back out into the Atlantic towards Bermuda that will be setting up uh, a shower and thunderstorm pattern over southeastern Florida today. Over our area, clear skies, sun, sunny, mild temperatures, temperatures in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees today, and tomorrow we'll be in the mid 80s. Then as we go farther to the west, we'll see some more rain breaking out and snow out over the uh, Dakotas, some heavy snow possible in that area today, and also in portions of central Colorado. Snow is also occurring along the southern portion of the Great Lakes from Lake Michigan all the way up to Lake Ontario. The uh, rain also will be occurring along the California coast as another low moves in and giving them rain from the San Francisco area northward up towards Washington State. Well, let's take a look at our forecast now, and we'll see that for today will be sunny with a high of 79, southwest wind 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 50, south wind at 8. Tuesday, sunny with a high of 84, south wind 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusting to 30 at times. Tuesday night, partly cloudy with a low of 63. Wednesday, partly cloudy with a high of 87. Wednesday night, chance of showers and thunderstorms moves in with a low of 63. Thursday, chance of showers and thunderstorms, 77 degrees. Thursday night, chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low of 52. And for Friday, chance of showers and thunderstorms with a high of 70 and a low of 50. Our high yesterday, 71. Our low this morning, 50 degrees. And that's a look at your Rocky Mount weather right up to the minute. Now back to you. Thank you, Fred. And here with us to give us an update in sports is Edward Green. Tell us what's the latest, Edward. Well, Murray, we had a lot of obviously very crazy storms. Uh, hopefully a lot of people out there are safe. We didn't really get much that damage in uh, Rocky Mount, mm -hmm. so thankfully that's good. But um, we're going to tell you a little bit now about a team from Carolina, okay. the Carolina Mudcats. They were actually in Huntsville, Alabama over the weekend. And we're going to tell you a little bit about how their series went with them. Well, after picking up their first one of the season in the last game of their home stand at home to Mobile, the Carolina Mudcats traveled to Huntsville, Alabama for a five-game series. Now, Carolina dropped the first two before rain on Friday turned Saturday into a doubleheader, followed by the series ender on Sunday. The Mudcats were looking for their second win of the season this weekend, but could not find it in a couple of close losses. Cody Puckett hit a two-run shot for his third home run of the year and second of the game in the top of the fifth inning to even the score at six. A Brandon Jones double off reliever Ruben Medina in the bottom of the sixth 
gave Huntsville back the lead at 8-6, which would be the final score in seven innings. Darren Bird pitched two scoreless innings for the win. In the nightcap, Carolina took a 1-0 lead in the third on a Jake Cahulio single and backed it up with another RBI single in the fourth by Eric Iman. But the Stars came back with one of their own in the fourth and two runs in the fifth, taking the lead when Jones drew a bases-loaded walk. Jared Hotchkiss, the only pitcher currently with a win on the Mudcats staff, took the loss, while one-third of a scoreless inning in relief was enough for Daniel Meadows to pick up his first win of the season. Donovan Hand struck out four in the final two innings for the save. And finally, on Sunday, Chucky Caulfield hit a two-out, two-run home run in the Huntsville third to push the Huntsville lead to 4-0. The Mudcats scored once in the fifth and seventh and pulled to within one in the eighth on a Chris McMurray single that played at Dennis Phipps. But Michael Fierce came in and, after allowing a walk to Puckett, struck out Felix Perez to end the threat and followed it with a scoreless ninth for his second save of the season. Meadows picked up his second win, while Travis Webb took the second loss for Carolina after giving up four runs in four innings of work. So now the Mudcats come home at 1-9 on the season and will play at Five County Stadium in Zebulon, North Carolina for the next 10 games, with five against Tennessee and the next five against Chattanooga. And Marie, outfielder Fred Lewis and pitcher Jose Arandondo from uh, are on rehab assignment here from the Cincinnati Reds, which is the Mudcats affiliate. So although the Mudcats aren't doing great, if you want to see some Major League talent um, down here in North Carolina for a good price, you should go check it out. Some good young players on that team, too. Well, awesome, awesome. Great. And thank you so much, Edward. Thanks, Mary. This has been your news break briefing. Join us tomorrow for our live news at noon. For WHIG-TV, I'm Marie Torres. We'll see you next time.